Hi, welcome back to this introduction to the Clinical Supervisor Toolkit course. I'm Dr. Susan Thompson, and this next segment will be talking about the different elements that are included in the course. Um, so, um, you there's so much that you'll be learning in the uh, 19 hours that we're going to be all together. Um, and I just wanted to give you a sense of um, what's included. Um, so, uh, first of all, you're going to get a manual that's uh, close to 125 pages right now. It um, includes sample supervision guidelines and contracts. It includes um, sample uh, documentation of supervision meetings. Uh, so you'll be receiving the manual as a Word document that you can copy uh, the information that's in it and use it. You have my permission. Many of the sample documents I've created for my own work and you'll be able to borrow them and use them for yours too. You'll be equipped with some specific talking points to use with supervisees as well as other practical tools and strategies for providing effective supervision. We'll be talking about group and individual consultation um, and how uh, to integrate um, theory and techniques into your work as a supervisor. You'll be getting some personalized feedback on developing a clinical supervision plan. Um, and um, you'll have at least two hours of ethics um, and legal content um, throughout the uh, hours that we're spending together. This training is a total of 20 hours of CEs, continuing education, that's required by Virginia's Board of Counseling to supervise LPC residents. Um, our meeting times are always on Saturday from noon until six. That's a total of 18 hours. This um, introduction is one extra hour and then you'll schedule uh, an additional hour as uh, in small groups. I've really stretched uh, the time so that um, the breaks are built into the course meeting times um, and that small group time you'll be able to talk about your supervision contract and ask any questions they ha haven't been able to in the larger group. Um, the email along with this uh, video is going to provide uh, a time for those meetings. So things that are going to continue to be covered. What else will be covered will be uh, the different roles of a supervisor. Mentoring, consultation, teaching, and gatekeeping. We will be talking about multicultural supervision competencies. I mentioned before that we'll be looking at the ACA um, and the approved clinical supervisor, as well as the Association for Counselor Educators and Supervisors Ethics and Standards for Supervisors. And um, something that I think is may be helpful for supervisors as you look at becoming an even better supervisor uh, than becoming certified as an approved clinical supervisor. That's the ACS and that's administered by the um, NBCC. We'll be talking about professional identity as a clinical supervisor um, and the professional identity of your supervisees as well. The Board of Counseling expects that as part of the work that we do with our uh, residents. Um, and any other related uh, professional development for, um, for mental health, our mental health, our supervisees' mental health, um, and how do you continue to grow and develop? Um, we'll be talking too about how beginning counselors transition and how we as supervisors can help them and uh, we'll be using my background as a faculty member teaching the introduction to counseling skills and the advanced counseling skills courses 
to review the elements of counseling, the methods, the skills, and techniques so that you're familiar with the terminology that your residents are probably more familiar with because they're just more recent from um, graduate counseling programs. Um, together, we're going to be developing a supervision contract that defines the parameters and expectations. The Board of Counseling offers a supervision contract. It's pretty lengthy and we'll talk about um, what's in there as well as what I think is also important. Um, and you'll have samples in your manual that will help you to develop your own. Um, I mentioned before, you'll get a template that is a supervision note and I'll talk about how I use that template. And um, each time we'll definitely be talking about ethics as well as legal issues related to supervision and counseling too. We'll talk about um, group and individual supervision strategies. I have some more templates for you. I told you it'd be practical. <laughs> as well as best practices for supervision and the practical application of those best practices. We'll review evaluation methods and then also the licensure paperwork. In my manual, I have links to sites that I think are gonna be helpful as well as some videos that I think are gonna be useful for you as well. Um, I've got screening questions to ask a potential supervisee as additional documents. Actually, this list of documents has come from other supervision courses that I've taught. Folks have gotten together in their break time to work on a particular issue or topic and create a, a document that could be useful for the group as well as for future groups. And that's one of them, that screening questions that you can ask a potential supervisee that came from the very first time that I offered this course. I've got a resident and counseling job description for you so that if you need to have something like that. Um, early on, a few years ago, the board was requiring a job description. Um, and those of us in private practice um, who took on a resident um, needed to have a job description. So I've got that created as well. And um, ha, uh, some, some documents that are a review of theories to use with supervisees, um, questionnaires that can challenge your uh, supervisee to consider their own development. Um, those are included in the manual. Quarterly goals template, that's the most recent document that was created by the last supervision course participants. A sample consent to record document that I used as a clinical coordinator for practicum and internship students, and then some sample professional development plans. That's like worst case scenario. So if you're having problems with a resident or supervisee, there are steps for you to take. That's part of best practices. As an educator, as a teacher, as a supervisor, then part of what we do is actually try and shape somebody's behavior toward um, professionalism and those sample professional development plans can be really helpful for you. That's the most challenging part of supervision that I've ha ever had to face. And fortunately, um, I haven't had to do much of that with residents in counseling, but it was a regular event, if you will, when I was the clinical coordinator at Old Dominion University. So my intention is to make this as easy as possible for you as you're taking on this pretty heavy duty task of uh, supervision in um, residencies. So I'm so glad that you registered for this clinical supervisor toolkit course. You're absolutely welcome to contact me during the course and even when it's been completed. I will be offering supervision of supervision uh, monthly, and you're welcome to be a part of that once you're finished with the course. Please know that I love to be a resource. So um, if you have a question about supervision, I'd love to speak with you about it. You're welcome to contact me.
um, and I will get back to you as soon as I'm able to. Um, as you're probably aware, I'm a working practitioner and uh, am as busy with clients as I'm sure you are as well. So I'll see you this Saturday. I'm really looking forward to meeting you and to collaborate on the next documents for the next manual. Take good care and I'll see you soon.